You're listening to the Beans and Dice podcast, a podcast about how we game. Tyrants of the Underdark. Uh, so Wayne got his first play of Tyrants of the Underdark today, pre-show, uh, first edition of Tyrants of the Underdark. And what I'd like to do is keep things moving along in the Beans, Give It the Beans, the Give It the Beans review style. Uh, for you folks at home, Give It the Beans, B. E A N S B is the basics. E is enjoyment. A is aesthetics. N is negatives. S is the summary, where I like to say try, buy, buy, try, or deny. Okay, uh, is is the way I like to measure that. I mean, that's the simplest way to do it. Uh, So let's talk about the basics. Rob, it's your game. Give us the quick basics. Okay. Two minute explanation. All right. What is Tyrants of the Internet? Timing, timing, two minutes. So I got five minutes, right? And um, go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so uh, the, the quick version I mean, the, the, the way this game is known, the reason this game is really known is it was the first, if not still only one of a few that I know of, pure deck building area control games. So you took two extremely popular uh, mechanisms from games, deck building. This is a pure. Uh, half of the game is deck building. I mean, you're talking about your dominions. You're, you know, you're just basic deck builders. Each turn, you're buying some cards out of a market. You've got some starter cards that'll allow you to either attack or to buy stuff. And so, you're each turn, you're buying stuff and you're attacking. Uh, you buy cards out of a market that upgrade those abilities and add in some keywords that allow you to do some other things as you go. And then a big part of it is the the other half of the game is the board. There's an area control. So uh, your classic area control games, you're trying to use these cards, build this deck so that you can then do things things on the main board. Most of your points are going to come from uh, fighting each other, knocking people out of areas, at the end of the game, controlling different areas on the board. This uh, D&D theme on this one, so I'd say the theme is probably fairly pasted on, but the D&D definitely is is helpful for a lot of people, Uh, brought a lot of people into this game. And as I was telling Wayne earlier, this is a game we played a lot back in the day. This is one that we pulled out regularly at game days. We introduced a lot of people to it, and I'd say Carlos and I at one point probably both had this game in our top ten games of all time. Uh, we were both just enamored with it for a couple of years. Uh, it's fallen a little bit. Um, I mean, it is an older title. To, to, I don't know if you caught what year it came out, so it's been around a little while. But that's the basics. No, it's not that old, like 2016? 2016, 2016, 2016, I think. Okay, so it's not that yeah. old. Yeah, not, not quite as old as I thought. But uh, that's that's the basics. So area control, deck building, uh, it, it played in, we played tonight teaching a new player in less than 45 minutes, I think. So uh, it's a quick game. Uh, Overall, it's currently ranked at 163 on the BGGs with a 110 for strategy games. Yep. Uh, it's weighted at a 2.57, yeah. which I would say is about accurate. Yeah. Um, I, I think maybe a little lighter. I don't know. Yeah, I'd say maybe a little lighter. Right dead center, I think. Yeah. It's got, you know, and I think going to the basics, I think, you know, anyone, if you've played any sort of deck building game, Right, so the the DC deck building game or any other, I mean, like you Susie laid out and you you're like, oh, okay, I can buy from the market and then if I can't buy from the market, I can go here and buy a kick and a punch, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, yep. So it's like if you it, you could just change out the terminology very quickly and you just know, okay, that's that's attack power, that's buy power. You get five cards, re, you refresh. So it it, it, it it there's nothing new there yep. as far as deck building. And I don't know where this came out in the realm of other you know DC deck building. It's probably a little before that. Um, but the area control, I think, is cool. Yeah, that, that adds that adds a little bit of a, a flavor to well, it. Let, let's go. Yeah. Let, let's give it the uh, the beans. Give it the beans, as I like to call the it. Basics, yeah. uh, on the basics. So we did the basics. Now let's talk about enjoyment. So we'll go around the horn. Uh, Mike, you you own a copy of this. Anything you enjoy about this? Any points you want to bring up? Uh, just the way that they kind of worked in the area control. Um, there's. I don't know, it's just it's a it's a great game the way that you can put your spies in areas but you still with your regular soldiers you kind of have to work your way through to get to certain areas um the other part of it that i love is uh the way that they mitigate uh you know like because when you have your starter cards there's always a way that you have to mitigate you know your crappy cards either get them out of your rotation or whatever these you promote them there's like a thing that they call promoting uh, where if cards that you buy from the market give you the ability to promote your card, it means that it takes it out of your hand and typically will increase the value of that point uh, or increase the point value of the card at the end of the game. But they're like kind of put into like this circle, you know, kind of like a coaster looking thing to get them out of the game. It's like meet uh, the Fockers, the circle of trust, the inner circle. There you go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're in the circle of trust. But it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I, en- I enjoy that part, especially when you know, uh, kind of like when the game's coming to an end, 
you start promoting those cards like faster and faster. Your really good cards you start promoting. So, but Wait, I, any yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, Michael. Wrap no, I was just up. gonna say I, I enjoy this game and it scales very well uh, yes. from two to four players. Any points that you saw, Wayne, that you enjoyed? So yeah, they enjoy. I I think. Like I said, it doesn't iterate on necessary air control, and it doesn't iterate on on deck building, but puts them both together and melds them very well. Um, I really like the like he said the promotion aspect of it is you're not trashing the cards. In a lot of deck building games, when you trash a card, it's gone mm-hmm. from the game. So if you bought a card, and even your starter cards, it's a way to make your starter cards instead of most deck building games. You're looking to just get rid of your, your starter card. In this, you're looking to get rid of it, but you're scoring a point by getting rid of it. You're making it val- more valuable. So I like that aspect. I think you know, like Carlos, you won the game by two points. And had I done better at figuring out the game was going to end soon, I might have promoted, instead of a starter card, promoted another card. Right? Yeah. So it's, it's kind of, I like that, that aspect. And I, I know the, the theme is kind of pasted on, but it is a cool theme. The Underdar, it's not pasted on. In, in, it, it's pasted on, in fact, that it, you, could, you could change this to be a lot of different sure. themes. Right? Okay, you, you know I'll agree. Saying? But the theme is cool. I, I, yeah. like, I like the Underdark. I like the Drow. I like the D&D theme. It's kind of cool. Mm-hmm. It, I think the cards, when you read the flavor text on the cards, which oh, I know yeah. Rob never did, but I was doing <laughs> yeah. that. No, yeah. I mean, no he, did he, did oh, he did once. He did once. Yeah. He did once. Yeah. Doppelganger. Doppelganger, the doppelganger, yeah. which is kind of cool. Yeah, so it was it, only four words. It so. was thematic, <laughs> and the cards made sense. And I, I like the fact, you know, we played with two decks, and there's, what, six total? So you, With the expansions, the, yep. The combinations there are pretty cool. So it's kind of like you have a little bit of the smash-up aspect with the deck where you can take two different factions, and, and, and you have not infinite possibilities, but a lot of possibilities. Yeah, you're picking like, two stacks of cards, and then melding them into one, and then each of those stacks has a different theme. Right. So you can do kind of the uh, the, dragons, the, right. drow, the drow, yeah. the dragons. There's undead, and they undead, all come with yeah. different mechanisms that right. you add to the game. So new keywords that do right. different things. So yep. your, your game flavor, flavor could change. So it has a lot of replayability there, which is cool. Yep, definitely is. Uh, for me, just uh, simply, I mean, it's just I, I love both of those mechanics. I, I love the I love deck building games. I was big on Dominion. Uh, I still play Dominion occasionally, and so I mean, this is very similar. Uh, it's it's that same kind of feels, and that's where Dominion kind of started uh, that that wave of games. And then I like area control. I've always been a fan of area control. I like war games uh, mostly for that part of it, for the area control, trying to dominate somebody, pushing back on the board, uh, taking over areas. So uh, this was one of the first games that, uh, if not like I say, the, the first popular one that added those two mechanics together. I'm sure there's some more since then. I'm trying to think of, I mean, I guess even like Lost Ruins of Arnak, you could say. Right. It's got a lot of other stuff, but it's got, you know, some deck building aspects. Sure. It's got some board area control type stuff. But this one's just purely those two. And we talked, I think, last week about games trying to do too many things and trying to be everything to all different people. Mm-hmm. This was before that fad kind of really started and got hot and heavy. But this game doesn't try to do a lot of different things. It takes those two mechanisms, shoves them together, and does really well at both of them, I think. And that's where I find my enjoyment. So, and I'll say for my enjoyment is the different decks that you d- that you play with. They swap out different keywords. So, like what Rob talked about, not trying to be too much, right? So, if we're only playing with two decks, we're only playing with two sets of keywords. Yeah, those sets of keywords may change, but you're not dealing with like eight sets of keywords. And there's only a couple of keywords in each set. I mean, there's it's really kind of minimum. I went over it with Wayne on the back of the thing. It tells you in the base set you get four decks. The other two are expansions, and so they each add a couple more keywords. But it just on the back of the book, there's like eight keywords for the whole first four decks. I mean, nice. yeah. so it's not overpowering. It, it's easy to teach. So that that's yeah. our enjoyment for the E. Uh, aesthetics A, this one should go pretty quick, but there's two versions yes, of this game be, now. Yeah, point that out. <laughs> so, sure. Michael, talk to us about the different versions. Uh, the original version has the little plastic uh, miniatures for like your soldiers and your spies, and uh, the new version comes in a well, and also the older box is like one of the longer type boxes, uh, yep. similar to like Power Grid, uh, that type of size. Uh, the new one. Although it comes with all the expansions, so you don't have to buy the expansions if you have the newer one. Uh, smaller box, that's more of a square box. Uh, the cards are better quality from what I understand. I've still never played with the new version, but all the plastic pieces in the old version are now chits, like uh, cardboard mm-hmm. chits in the new one. I prefer the older one, the original one. And I keep, I always say, like, if, if I ever had a chance to buy the newer one for real cheap, I would buy the newer one, take all those cards, put them in the older one, put the old cards in the new one, and then sell the new one off. I wouldn't even bother punching it or anything. I would just, I just want the better quality cards. But, uh, I mean, other than that, it's, it looks great when it's on the table. 
Uh, it's real easy to make out. The colors are very distinctive, so there's really no question of is that this color or that. I mean, it is like it doesn't do the uh, what was the uh, Stonemaier game? It uh, does. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, it definitely right, doesn't right, do right, that. Rising, yeah, the everybody's colors, got yeah. their uh, little little. Um, uh, shields for the soldiers and the, the little right the and the, and the little the place spies. where you keep your cards everything is color coordinated to who you are it's yeah. very very yeah. simple to make out but uh, i i enjoy the the aesthetics of it yeah I, I would like to see the new board you said the new board is somewhat different than the old board i think there was a little new it? art on it's the new board art, i think yeah. Yeah. I mean, oh new like, art like, oh okay the, hey a, a smaller box is a plus for the newer one sure better better cards is a newer better thing and those plastic minis are cool. I definitely would want those plastic minis, but also the little shields are kind of like, I, I wish they're, they're just shields. Little, they're just shields. Yeah. If I had little guys, little soldiers and little spies, that would have been cooler. But I definitely think that it's definitely a downgrade to go from the plastic to the to the cardboard. Um, and I know we talked about the card quality improving being linen finish, but Rob, we've played this game a ton of times, your yeah. copy at least, Mine's and I still have up. not seen where yeah. on no. the cards they've held up well, they shuffle well. Yeah. And Rob does not sleeve his card. So nope, nope. when it comes to the artwork and the components, which is what the aesthetics, the A and the beans goes for. Yeah, I'll leave that to you guys because I'm not the big D&D fan. What do you all think of the artwork? And the... I, thought they were, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I, it was pretty standard kind of D&D. Wizards of the Coast. Wizards of the Coast. That, that they have that look for their drow. And the, it's and like right out of their manuals, yeah, right out of been. their if you had like adventure a, guides. Like a dark book, it mm -hmm. seems like the artwork would be right from it. And then the flavor text is great. Yeah. You know, I know yeah, Rob I read like the Doppelganger, Doppelganger flavor text, which was... Uh, uh, I, I, nice life you have there. I think I'll take it. Yeah, right. Right. I'll take that. Yeah. <laughs> take that. Yeah. that was pretty cool. It's yeah. fitting. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do. I do appreciate that the, the new version comes with the expansions. Right, it's all in one, so you don't have to buy them separate anymore. So that's kind of cool. That is yeah. very nice. Now we get to the ends of the beans, the negatives. None. So, Sorry. Uh, Move anybody on. next? <laughs> Summer. Anybody want to lead off that topic for negatives? Uh, I guess I'll start it off while y'all think. Uh, for me, it uh, one of the negatives, and, and I'm nitpicking here. I'm going to just point out that game. while we were playing, Carlos was trying to find a negative. I can right. tell. And, and when he finally <laughs> found something, he's like, ah, there it is. There's yeah. the negative. There so, it is. Yeah. It really uh, is nitpicking, it, but go ahead. Yeah. Which is good. That's a good yeah. sign of a game. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, the scoring, now this is also a positive, the scoring at the end of the game, you will score every card you have in your deck mm -hmm. for their value. They have the, Every card has two values on it. One is the value of the card if it's still in your deck slash discard, or two, the value of the card if you had promoted it into your inner circle. So that's a fun mechanism. But having to go through a deck that I built the whole game and count one, two, three, four, like five. like 30 cards, but... You know, yeah. it, it's it's a thing. It's, yeah. a, it, it's pretty nitpicky. It, it is nitpicky. Yeah. There's like a million... I mean, you have to do but that in cool. Arnak, you have to do that in a bunch, yeah. Because you don't feel like you lost anything for buying that card right. Every, everything's, everything's a positive, positive. experience yeah, there's no negative there so i can't i can't think of anything else uh no i really can't think of a negative i mean it's really just a pretty solid game I, there's nothing that sticks out as like a damn that's not very cool or i don't like it i, I got one thing personally oh i'm sorry I thought, yeah, no, go, go ahead i just one person before i forget um because i'm no old cubes. and i forget stuff but well no cubes that, that's number one <laughs> but uh yeah, number two you can give me all the plastic <laughs> pieces out of yours and we'll get it yeah, yeah, there you it. go there you go there you go <laughs> Uh, is the the little tokens for controlling areas? I always forget, and, I, and Carlos was trying to help me. Put it over here. Put it over here. Put it on top of your deck. Put it over there so you don't forget it. But the, the one, if you have control of one of the the cities, I, I can't say how many because depending Complete on the number control, of players, yeah, yeah, it sc scales. Yeah. So it's anywhere mm -hmm. from three to I think seven if you're in a four player game. But anyway, if you have control of an area, if majority control, you get the one side of the chit, which usually gives you just plus one on your buy power that round. And if you have total control, which means you own all the spaces in that city area, you flip it over to the total control side, it usually gives you like a plus one to your buy power and then gives you either one or three victory points for every round that you hold that, that it comes back around to you. And so I always forget to do that. I always lay out all my buy cards. I'm like, I got five buy. And then I go and buy a card and then I look down again. I'm like, oh crap, I forgot I have six buy. There's a six over there. <laughs> <laughs> Let me undo that. Let me put that card back. Take the next one. So, I mean, that's, again, that's a personal thing. Probably most people don't have that issue. No, but, I totally agree. Yeah. Because, I mean, and it was, what's funny is four or five times during the game, I had one of those things, forgot to buy power, and as I'm doing my buy, Rob's like, hey, you know you have a buy power thing. Did you do that So, one? like, you can't remember for yourself. Yeah, yeah I can't help other people. other people. Yeah, I'm more worried no, about I, other I people missing a, it. Not, not, not even this game, but kind of any game where you get, like, a temporary power. 
where you have a little token that you take off the board and you got to remember that this gives me an extra buy or an extra this or an extra that. It's so hard to remember that. Fiddly. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's a little yeah. fiddly. But that's, that's nothing. That's yeah. so oh, minor. No, no, no. Yeah, it's, it's minor. nitpicky. Yeah. But it's like, is there a better way of remembering or a different token or a different way to, to force you to remember to take that victory point or force you to remember to have that, that buy power? You know, that like, it would almost be like if you had a, like a rondelle that you you moved it and that's my buy power and you always start at one or whatever always start at two I don't know. or if but, they gave you a token that told you you had a buy know, power that would be where, depending on where, yeah. it is on the board, you where you where you put it yeah I got to put it right tape it to yeah, my that, forehead that's that's a criticism <laughs> just of the players more than anything because I I definitely forgot several times and like I got to the point at the end of the game you also where forgot I, to score your victory points. I, maybe I don't know, but what I would do is I take the victory point, put it here, and at the end of the turn, move it over. But it's just it's that upkeep that sometimes yeah. you forget. That step mm-hmm. two where you gain victory points yeah. was one that we were also forgetting. And that could be a, a downside of a game like this that plays so quick, and like where it's like I'm finishing my turn, you could be starting your turn. We can yeah. just you get in that groove of just going. That's when you forget. turns in this game are quick. We didn't mention They're that earlier. Quick. Turns Very are so quick. fast; it comes back to you so quick. Yeah, but yeah. We got about two minutes till we open the phone, so I don't want any negatives out of yeah. Seattle. Uh, I mean, other than what you guys are saying, I mean, very nitpicky. The setup time with putting all the white uh, shields out, maybe. And again, I'm like stretching here. Yeah. Okay. But that's good yeah. though. You, I mean, we have three free nitpicks, but they're like. Yeah. So that gets us minor. to the S of beans. The summary: Would you say buy, try, or deny? Uh, we'll go west coast to east coast. Uh, without question, if you like deck builders. Uh, and if you enjoy area control, even if you really don't like the two together, try this one because you'll like it. Yep. Um, <laughs> it this, uh, in my top 20, this is number nine, I think. Um, this is probably, I would say, easily my in my top two to three deck builders as far as favorites. And I can't even think of like what the other ones are. I'm just saying in my top three because I'm not sure if there is other ones. But anyway, it's a definite buy for me. Yeah, Wayne. Wayne. So get the get the older I'm, opinion. I'll get the fresh opinion. Yeah, I'm really close to a buy. Uh, I'm in between the two. My issue would be how much I want the plastic pieces versus the new one, or what the price is on the new one is compared to trying to find a used copy of the original. I've heard the old one is is getting pretty hard to find. Yeah. Mm. So I'm I'm I would I'm personally really leaning towards. Hey, if I see a copy, I might buy it. Uh, I'm not gonna go out and hunt it down, but if I see it, I'll probably I'll probably buy it. Because next time you walk into Armada, maybe I know what you're walking out <laughs> yeah, with. Yeah. I'm, I'm the arm. Uh, <laughs> and, but then I've definitely it's definitely a try. Like definitely, it's a cool game. If you're into any like like you said, any kind of deck building or any kind of area control, uh, it's a really good intro to that kind of both combined. Definite yeah. buy for me. Like I say, it was it was top ten? For, I think, and I, I don't want to speak for Carlos, but it was top ten for both of us for a long time, for a couple of years probably. So. Uh, yeah, it's it's still easily in my top fifty, probably around my top twenty. So yeah, great game. Yeah, after you know, I the only reason I haven't bought it is because you have it. Yeah, and oh, I thought that before. would be the reason why you yeah, would the reason buy, to it. buy it. That's motivation. <laughs> <laughs> if first edition was still out there with the minis, it would have already been up. You know, because it wasn't available. Like Robert had it, it just wasn't available. Yeah, so I could never really get it. Uh, but if it was out there and available, I would have bought it. And now it's the it's the Second edition with the chits that has me kind of like, yeah, yeah, maybe. Look on Etsy, see if there's an upgrade pack. Or I can laser cut some minis or something. I don't know. Well, we'll there you go. Out. But uh, my my in summary, my answer is, ah, geez, it it it's a buy. Like it, it is a buy because of the quality of the game itself. The only reason I could see you not making it a buy is if you are actively against the fantasy, the dark elf, the drow, the that whole gothy look to it. If if that's something that you're anti then yeah you're gonna have to find something brighter and chipper i mean in that regard i will say that i've i've broken this out with people that do not like dungeons and dragons and saw the box cover and were totally turned off Mm -hmm. and then once we got into the game they even said you know out loud like when i saw the box i wasn't (laughs) even interested in this because i thought it was like a DD type of game Mm -hmm. but if you can get past that the gameplay itself is just it's so solid yeah, we've definitely introduced it to those people uh, at some of our game days that uh, weren't interested really much at all, and it, it became a regular staple for us for there for a while. And uh, people would get in just because we were playing, and we needed a fourth player or whatever. We wanted a fourth player, and they're yeah. like, "Wow, I enjoyed that way more than I thought I was going to." <laughs> so yeah, yeah, three D printing yeah. Uh, some of those pieces to replace Absolutely. would be a good idea. I yeah. think uh, even just upgraded acrylic, you know, might might just spruce it up just a bit. 
Uh, but that is our Beans and Dice review of Tyrants of the Underdark, uh, published by Wizards of the Coast. Actually, Gale, Gale Force, Force 9, 9. Uh, with a license from Wizards of the Coast, uh, designed by Peter Lee, Rodney Thomas, and Andrew Veen. Uh, check it out. Yeah, We're going to do this later? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, or we can do, we it, do it now. now? Oh, yeah, so we we're, we're going to put this one on our, our board up back here just because we... Uh, while I do that, while you we start talking about lines. that, I'm going to yeah. open up the phone lines. I, I didn't prep. I never do. So let me look over my shoulder here and see where we'd be at. I'm, I'm, all right. <laughs> slide, slide, slide. Ooh. Headphones or... Do I have any more left? And that's it. Okay. So uh, I'm going to... I'm not going to read my whole list now. If we do this later, I'll, uh, I'll read down it. But this is going to be fairly high for me. This is the first play I've had in a little bit, but... Uh, it's going to make top 10. Um, That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's going to go... Wow, this gets up there into the Unsettled at 6, the Thunder Alley at 5, <laughs> Mosaic at 4 area, I, I think. Thunder Alley. Gosh, you know what? I think it's going to go between Mosaic and Thunder Alley, 4 and 5. Oh, we got a call coming in. So, yeah, that's where I'm going. Between Mosaic at 4, Be Tyrants at 5, Thunder Alley at 6, wow. and Earth. Wow. Earth Earth's coming off the off. board. Yes, Earth is dropping off at number 20. Rob hates Earth. Yeah, I hate Earth. <laughs> Beans and Dice Podcast. State your name. Where are you calling from? Thanks for watching the Beans and Dice Podcast. Don't forget to like and subscribe.